then obviously the next thing is you, you got you got to engage. Like you have to engage. You, you can't just put it out there and then and then just um, just leave it out there for for people to you know. It just it doesn't work that way. We need to engage yeah. with the audience. Now, now a part of a part of engagement means you have to support other people. Like, yes. like there there are people who are pursuing their own you know passion or business who who you know support you. Like there are times where you have, you're gonna have to you know you share some of their posts. You know, like don't just be like, oh man, I got people people supporting me and you know thank you thank you thank you. you no, know, you thank them by sharing their their content as well. Yeah, you know that's actually a really good point. I had the same conver- a similar conversation with someone the other day. I said it's it's not the size of your audience; it's what you do with your audience that makes a difference, right? Good morning, and welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Jason podcast. This morning, Jason is chatting with Bowtie Terrence. They'll be jamming about how to improve your social game, engagement, and how to capture your audience. Grab your mug and some closers coffee for this exciting episode with your host. Jason Harris. But first, a word from our sponsor. For freshly brewed discussion on automotive sales and marketing, this is Coffee with Jason. The Coffee with Jason podcast is sponsored by Closer's Coffee. For that full-bodied, rich, sweet flavor with a bright acidity. Drink Closer's Coffee, stay caffeinated, and keep on closing. Find out more at closerscoffee.ca. Hey, what's going on, Podcast Nation? It's Jason Harris here with Digital Dealership Solutions. Hey, thanks for joining me on another episode of Coffee with Jason. Today, I have my guest, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Bowtie Terrence. <laughs> hey, what's up? What's going on, man? Thanks for coming to jamming with me today, dude. I really appreciate that. I, mean, I appreciate the invite. So, um, hey, for everybody out there that's either listening or watching this, um, you know, if they don't know who Bowtie is, they probably should. You know, I mean, look, I'm in Canada. I'm in Toronto, Canada, and I know who Bowtie is. And uh, real quick, you are, where in Texas again are you? I'm in Dallas, Texas. uh, You're in Dallas, Texas. By way of Atlanta, Georgia. By way of Atlanta, Georgia. See, we're talking about branding, right? I mean, here I am, Toronto, Canada, and I know who Bowtie Terrence is. In fact, actually, a fair amount of people up here know who you are, sir. So uh, this will be a fun one to do. But for everybody out there that don't know who you are, uh, if you can start us off with that two-minute origin story that is Mr. Bowtie Terrence. Two-minute story. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Kind of how you got started in the industry and how that that all came about. Okay, well, I... uh, Immediately um, prior to joining the automotive industry, I was I was driving eighteen wheelers, big rigs. Um, but I had a little bit of a finance background, and I wanted to get back into finance. So I thought I'd go apply at uh, car dealerships to go into the finance department. Nice. And uh, yeah, they all greeted me with the same uh, the same reception. You got to sell cars first. And uh, didn't know a whole lot about selling cars. I actually, I actually uh, tried to sell cars at a few, a couple of dealerships before I ended up at Dallas Dodge. No, nobody knows this because I, I, I uh, politic my way into a car sales job at Dallas Dodge by <laughs> telling them I hadn't sold, I hadn't failed at selling cars in the past. <laughs> so, nice. But I tried at a couple of dealerships, didn't do too well. And but I know I wanted to do finance, so I gave it another shot. And they told me I had to sell cars, so. I read books, I watched YouTube videos about, you know, how to sell cars. And then I um, said, hey, why not? Let me give it a shot. Um, at the dealership, you know, Dallas Dodge, where I work at, they had like 30 salespeople when I started. And, um, you know, I'm from Atlanta, so I don't know anybody here in Georgia, I mean, in Texas, so I couldn't get any referrals. Um, I don't know anybody. Yeah. So I said, um, you know, I know how difficult it is for people to remember names, you know, myself included. Uh, so I said, you know, I got to give people something to remember in case they don't remember my name. So I started wearing bow ties. And uh, so I would, would just hoping, you know, if they come back, they'd ask for the guy who was wearing the bow tie. And then next thing you know, my coworkers were calling me bow tie. So I just say, hey, I'm just going to go by bow tie Terrence. You're just going to run with that. Now, have you ever worn a bow tie before? I mean, was that just something natural? To you know, I had a couple of bow ties, but... Um, I didn't really wear them. You know, I, I try to get into it. I, I try to do it, but nothing, you know, I wasn't real consistent. I got to be honest with you. I don't even know if I know how to tie a bow tie. Man, you, you too. know what? You got one on your neck. All right. Can, yeah. can we, can we get a bow tie lesson from bow tie Terrence? Oh, uh, so let me tell you, man, this <laughs> a couple of months, about, about six weeks ago, I got, I made a commitment to, uh, 
get in the gym and gain gain a couple pounds um, because I had been saying I was going to do it, but I just, I tried for, you know, a few weeks and I stopped, you know, I, I let work get in the way. So I, I committed to doing it and I actually gained about maybe 15 pounds in like three months. So none <laughs> of my shirts actually fit. So I got to go buy new clothes so I can <laughs> button my, uh, so I, I can't button the neck of my shirt to even tie the tie. That's why I, I had to grab it, you know, just to put it on. <laughs> okay, well, next time I have you on, we're going to get a bow tie lesson from bow tie Terrence. Okay? Let's do it. So, okay, so you hadn't, like, bow ties was not a normal part of your thing. You just mm -mm. had one sitting in your closet, and you were just like, the hell with it, I'm going to wear a bow tie into work today? Yeah, I had, I had a couple of them. I just didn't wear them. You know, I maybe had, like, three or four, and um, I didn't get a whole lot of use out of them until I started, you know. And then bow tie, the, the, the your uh, your your uh, fellow coworkers started calling you bow tie. That kind of so. stuck, you know. And then, then what? You just it just became a normal thing. You just were wearing bow ties every day, and yeah, I wear, I wear bow tie. Like it, it got to a point to where I would you know try to switch it up a little bit and wear you know just a necktie. And it was like, man, where's the bow tie? Where's man? We can't even call you bow tie. So I was like, oh, I just wear bow ties, um, but. So what was the point that you realized that you were kind of onto something? Like, like what, what was it? It was like, Hey, I kind of got something here. I can brand this. I can turn this into something. When, when did that happen? Um, man, you know, it, it happened like accidentally. So my uh, brother moved to, to Dallas, maybe like 20, maybe two years ago, he moved to Dallas and he's a, he actual is a rapper. Okay. But, um, he was, a I got him a job at a dealership with me. And he was, you know, we was in the car one day, just waiting for an up. And he was out there rapping. <laughs> and I was, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, man, we gotta figure out a way to get you seen. And then, um, so I started rapping and then I was rapping about cars. And I was like, wait a minute, man, I, let me do a song. So, <laughs> so. Really? That's what happened. Yep, so I made a song about uh, selling cars. And then like everybody at the dealership was like singing the song. And I was like, man, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is the route that I'm gonna take. And then the next thing you know, I got, I'm on a podcast with hosts from Toronto. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, that video did go, I mean, it did go a little viral. I mean, I know there's a lot of dealerships across the country that actually um, have seen that video. In fact, actually, I think I've even seen the video used in a couple presentations before. Um, yeah. So the video went, yeah, it was a great video. We'll definitely make sure we have a link for that video uh, down below or for sure, at least in the comments. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you guys, you, you did, you did the, uh, the rap, the rap, all right. You recorded it. Then it, it yeah. went on. And well, that, that, that's not even the one that went viral. That was oh, the, one the one that went, went viral. Okay. No, the, the one that went viral. It was, a, it was like, I didn't, it was, I was at a Toyota dealership. Um, that's the one that went viral. And to me, that wasn't even my best video up to that point. Like I had <laughs> better big videos prior to that one, but for whatever reason, that was the one that got the traction. Um, but it was, I did maybe like three or four videos prior to that one at the Dodge dealership. So and, that um, you did these videos and you, you put this information out there. People started to consume it. All right. When did you really kind of feel like, Hey, you know, this is actually supporting my sales and my sales efforts at the dealership. I mean, were, were customers coming in going, Hey, yo, where's bow tie? Yeah. Well, customers would call the dealership from around. I wouldn't, I ain't gonna call them customers. I'll say, people would call the dealership from around the country just to speak to me. <laughs> wow. and, uh, yeah. And then I was like, man, but I mean, I got, I get like, I've don't get me wrong. I've sold cars from social media. Um, I remember uh, maybe like early on, I was, uh, when I learned how to do the advertising thing, I spent $10 on, on Instagram and um, it led me to a car sale. Like I sold somebody from that ad um, from, there was a video, one of my videos I've, you know, $10 to promote it, sold somebody. And her cousin came and bought a car and then his girlfriend bought a car and then her cousin told her this car came and bought another car. So that $10 <laughs> got me four car deals. <laughs> $10 got you four car deals. Yeah. I think we just came up with the name for your next song. Um, <laughs> 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 okay, so, um, so, so customers started coming in. Um, what was that kind of conversation like? I mean, was it just, it was immediately to say, Hey, I saw your video. You know, I really like what you're kind of putting down. You know, this is the situation I'm in. Can you help me out? I mean, how did that? Yeah. Like the, the, 
like I said, the majority of the people that called weren't interested in buying a car. They just, you know, wanted to talk to me. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I, I took that as an opportunity to, you know, build a relationship so that when they are ready to buy a car, you know, they'll come talk to me again, hopefully. But um, it was just, it's, I mean, it's, just, it's, it's advertising, it's marketing. It's no different from, you know, targeting or whatever, you know, you, you put out a, uh, you put content out, you know, they don't necessarily, you don't want them to necessarily come in and talk to you because you created the content, you, you know, you want them to come in and do business. Uh, so I think like my whole goal objective, even today, you know, I, I do rap videos I mean, I do rap. Um, yeah, videos. I mean, I just did a song recently. Um, it, I didn't do a video for it yet. I did a song, but I, I, do, I do this content just to name and brand recognition, just to stay relevant. Well, because you're creating um, an audience, right? I mean, these are right. people that may, um, uh, that may be in market for a car, may not even be in market for the car, but they're mm-hmm. consuming your content. They're getting to know you as an individual, all right? Yeah. Uh, you're relating with them on, uh, on a uh, type of music that you guys both enjoy, all right? right. So. So you know, it just feels like they're just a, a little closer to you before they even come in. Do you ever get that? Absolutely. Like, like they know you, like you just like a little closer with them when they come through the door. Now you, you, you're hundred percent right there. They do uh, like all, all they'll like reach out to me, which they mark. Most of them do. Like they reach out to me before they come to the dealership. Um, my customers, like the customers who actually, you know, do business with me, but I have yeah. actually run into people at the dealership who say, man, what's up, bow tie? And I was like, and this is when I was still selling cars, but they'd be working with another salesperson. So I said, you know, like, like my, you know who I am, but you come to the dealership and you don't even ask for me. You know, so that's that got, you know, that's going to happen too. You know, but well, that's going to happen too. But, but actually, yeah. that's and in fact, I just want to uh, pause that for a second because I think that's really important for all of the managers, the sales managers, general managers, dealer principals that are out there listening to this. Is that you know the, the whole point of me kind of doing this podcast is, is my goal here is to really try to eliminate uh, upper management's fear of their salespeople having strong brands. Now, I, I got no problem admitting it, and, and uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to say that your brand was actually probably stronger than the dealership's brand at that point in time. Well, I'm going to go ahead and say right now, my Facebook page got a thousand more likes than my dealership's Facebook page. So. <laughs> we'll see. And I, and, and I think that's really important. And I think for all the managers out there that are listening or watching to this, all right, that you can't be afraid of this. You know, it's, it's, you're going to sell, personally, you're selling more cars because of it, but the dealership in itself is also selling more cars. 100%. 100%. I think, I mean, it's, it's no different from, it's like football. You know, I'm, I, I got a, you know, football background. So mm-hmm. to me, Football is was my mentor, so like I, I have a lot of life lessons, business lesson that football taught me. And one, you know, to your point about the if if I'm selling more cars, the dealership is selling more cars. Um, it's it's no different from a running back or some, somebody who have their brand bringing people to the stands to see them. Like the team is going to get paid as well. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Now, it, it, you know, it's funny. Um, I find a lot of people that are, are, are similar to you doing a really good job of creating these personal brands is that a lot of them do have this sports background. So that's why I was actually kind of interested in the fact that you said that. And, and I think I, where I find the connection is there is that in sports, you have to have a plan or strategy. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to execute on it. And, and, and that's what makes you good at sports is to be able to, you know, work as a team, create the plan and then just execute, just do the damn thing. You know, right. you'd be amazed how many um, LinkedIn messages I get or Instagram messages or Facebook messages I get saying, you know, hey, I want to do what you guys do, right? I mean, I, I want to do that, you know, but mm-hmm. I don't have that, you know, they, they seem to have this block inside of them. Maybe it's a lack of confidence or, or maybe direction or something along that lines. But what I find is, is that they all have great ideas. Mm-hmm. An idea is only as good as how well you can execute it. Right. You know, it's like, we, you right. know, in, in our playbook, we have, we have all kinds of great plays. Right. But a play don't mean shit if you can't execute it well. 100%. <laughs> if you, execution is the key. <laughs> so, you're so, 100% right. So, you know, I, I get a lot, I, I'm get, I get that message a lot in my inbox. You know, like, how do I start? You know, yeah. and, and um, I have to admit, I'm not the best at answering that because, you right. know, my answer is just like, well, just hit the damn red button. You just start. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, there's, you just start. Like, when, when you you know, at that time when you started, like mm-hmm. walk me through that. Was it this like the same day? Was this the next day? Was there some time and planning put into place before you hit that red button and start recording? <laughs> nope. I'm going to tell you. So I, I, uh, 
I had an old, I mean, the laptop that I hadn't used in years. And it was the slowest laptop that, that I had. But I, you know, I was like, man, you know, I didn't have the money to go make an investment in the laptop that I got now. But I had, I didn't have headphones. I, I had, you know, I had a set of Rosetta Stone headphones with the mic attached to it already. <laughs> and I figured out and how to like download MP3s from YouTube, you know, and uh, I don't know what program I used. I can't remember the program I used to record the song, but I did it, you know, and it, the sound quality was terrible. Um, but I didn't realize it was terrible until I found better sound quality. And I was like, man. Um, but I did that song just because I wanted to do it. Like, you know, you know it's like I think ultimately when people ask, like people ask me, you know, what did I need to do to get started? Well, first you gotta actually wanna do it. You know what I mean? Like you have to like really be hungry to do it. Like it's just like food, you know what I mean? Like, man, I want to get something to eat. Well, you're not going to be in a real hurry to get something to eat if you're not hungry. Yep. But if you are hungry, you're going to haul ass to get you something to eat. So that's, <laughs> that's where it be. You got to be hungry for, for one. So people say, man, I've been thinking about doing this. I'm like, first of all, when you get hungry, then talk to me because I'm not real interested in like wasting my time pouring into people who don't want to be poured into. That's so true. Actually, that's actually a really good response. And, it, and it's a true going even back to your sports analogy, right? Is that if you want to win at this, you want to sell cars, you want to move metal, you want to make that big paycheck, you got to be hungry. You got to want to do it. You got to like, want You can't it. just say you want it. You got to like, it, it has to be an in, internal desire. And if, if you have it, then nobody can stop you from doing it. So, okay. So I'm just picturing this in my head. So uh, it was you and did you say it was your brother? That my you guys, brother, my younger okay, so, brother. So you and your younger brother, you're sitting in a car at the dealership waiting for the next up. All mm -hmm. right. And you guys start just back and forth, randomly rapping with each other. Yeah, so he was just uh, rapping, you know, tell, he was just talking about his, you know, what he got plans to do. You know, he just got to get some money <laughs> to do it, you know, and you know, he wanted to get his rap career started. And he was, you know, I'm listening to him freestyle. And so I started freestyling and I'm talking about selling cars. And then uh, we did it for maybe about 15 minutes. And then so later that day I got home and I, I was thinking about the rap and I was like, man, let me start writing. So I wrote some stuff, found a beat. And then I don't know, man, I just, one thing led to another. And we was at the dealership and one of my coworkers, he uh, I gave him my cell phone so he can record us doing a, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so like, what was this like the next day like the next day you go back into the dealership with the lyrics in hand and you're like okay let's record no it's no it's a, it's a little bit more sophisticated than that you know it's 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 not as easy as it might look it's it's well, pretty you, you gotta have a playbook you gotta take time right you gotta you're yeah. you, you gotta put it out so so how much time from when you started writing putting the, you know putting the pen to the paper all right putting the lyrics from the time you actually decided to hit that red button um it may be about, maybe about a week. It, I don't know. It don't take me long. That, that's, that's the point, right? Is that you, yeah, it's about you, a week. You're like, you, you, you made the decision in your head. I'm going to do this. I'm going to execute on this. Right. Yeah. Right. You, you went home, got your playbook out. All right. Starting writing out the lyrics and within that week. All right. You're like, okay, get your cell phone out real quick. And you're just going to start rapping. Yeah, it, it, was, <laughs> it was, well, I, rec I had to, I recorded it first. I had to record it on my computer. It was the week that I'm talking oh, yeah, that's about. Right. So I recorded yeah. the song. And then, so I write, and like I record the song so fast, I don't know all the lyrics, um, <laughs> you know, by the time the song is finished. So I had to listen to it for a little while on my way, my way to car. So I was driving to work, listening to my own song, um, you know, doing videos of myself, singing <laughs> my song, you know what I mean? And that's how it, was, that, that, like, that's how it started. I was just doing like, so you, you, did know, a few, you, you did a few rehearsals. Like you did, yeah, you, you did that's a, what it was. Yeah, and then I was like, practice. man, let's do a real video. And it's, did a real video and that and that wasn't even the first song i did a real video for the second song and then now, you know, when did when did you first get that customer the first customer that came and said hey i saw this you know it was pretty cool how how much how soon after that did you get that first customer um like so you, the, like i said before um mainly people don't never really just come in and ask for me like the folks who see my content to buy a car from me, they reach out to me before they come in. Okay. Um, so they'll reach out to me and you know, I'm a salesperson. So yep. people don't necessarily reach out to me to buy a car. Most of the people just reach out to me and it's my job to see if I can convert them into 
a, a, an uh, appointment. See, I think that's really key. See what it is, is that um, you have this passion, right? right. And um, you, you put this passion out there. Um, it was very authentic because you're very passionate about it, mm -hmm. right? And that started to create an audience that may or may not be interested in buying a car at that moment in time. Right. But what it is, you created that audience. Then through engaging with that audience, all right, you found opportunities where, like you said, you you sold someone's cousins or, right. you know, and then that sister bought one and then right. someone crashed their car and came back and right, right. bought another and it, it, one. All, all from the content. Like, so it's like, it's like, I, I say, uh, I tell, you know, people who ask me, you know, I, I've, for a long time, I've been this pillar in my community where people like just have such a high level of respect for my opinion. And they'll ask me certain things. And I say, man, there's two types of people in this world, people who pick fruit and people who don't plant seeds. So that's a really good one. I like that. You got to plant seeds, you know, so me, the content this the content is not me picking. This is just me planting seeds. You know, I don't know if I don't, you, you may, I don't know. No, no, that's, that's a really, really good analogy. In fact, I think a lot of people that are listening right now are watching this. This is, this is something you kind of need to take note of, right? Yeah, like yeah. you're, you're not making content uh, to sell cars. You're making content to plant seeds in, 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 with the intent of creating a relationship. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, I, I mean, so this last, the actual last video I did was the, uh, that, you know, the, the real estate video, the yeah. monopoly. I did it. That whole production and that thing cost me about a thousand dollars. Um, the song I've made $13 on that song on from streaming <laughs> That's you know, awesome. multiple, multiple streams of income, but, <laughs> but, um, it, it, it may be next month. It may be a year from now. Somebody's going to buy a house for me because of that video. Yes. You know, so I, I'm not expecting like when I, you know, there's a lot of people who expect immediate results. I used to be yeah. one of those people who, who expect immediate return. Like, I'm going to plant seeds today and I'm going to go out tomorrow and I'm going to have a, a, a tree full of apples. You know, it, it don't happen that way. No. Um, so the main thing is just to stay consistent. You know, you, you just keep planting seeds, you know, just keep planting. Like even like the, I do internet sales and it's a lot of phone, a lot of phone. You, sometimes you might not, you, you may go an hour and not get nobody to pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. um, you may go four or five days and not sell a car. But if you, if you made enough phone calls, if you sent enough text messages, if you left enough voicemail during those five days where you didn't sell a car, you may go two weeks without, without having to do any of those things because you not, you won't have time because you're selling cars. So that's, it's just got to, be consistent in planting those seeds. Whatever your seed is, whatever your content is, that your content is your seed. Yes, 100%. And, and, and I, like I said, this is so, so important. And I, I want to make sure everybody that's listening and watching this really, really understand this because there's so much value in what you're saying there because I get that a lot. You know, I'll get that message in my inbox saying, you know, I've been at this for, you know, for a few months now and I haven't seen anybody. I mean, no, one, no one's called me, no one's come in. And it's like, to your point, you know, you got to plant those seeds. You got to let harvest come. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta let those relationships, but here's what I also find too. And I think you're actually pretty darn good at this is that we'll start planting seeds in the sense of creating content, but then we do a shit job engaging with the people. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just like, we just put it out there, but we never actually engage with the people that want to engage with it. So yeah. it's, it's not enough. So, um, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. It's not enough that we just put the content out. We have to engage with, we have to engage with the people as well. You gotta engage. You have to engage and it. You know, it's, it's, like a lot of this stuff I've learned, you know, just through making, you know, trial and error. Um, and I've learned you have to engage and, you know, in, in the beginning, you know, you do this content, like you just, you realize, or, or you're trying to, you're absolutely trying. It's like your, your intent is to build yourself versus to build the audience. Yes. Um, so w when you're trying to build yourself, you know, you, you, it, it comes with a little ego where you feel like, man, I can't reply to everybody. You know, no, you gotta, you gotta do that. You're not trying to build yourself. You're trying to build the audience. And, yeah. and the only way to build the audience is to engage with it. Um, so it, it's, it's one of my biggest pet peeves. In fact, actually, it, it's the one thing that actually keeps me up at night. I can't go to sleep until I've literally responded to every single comment I got that day. Yeah. Like, and if I don't, I don't sleep that well. Yeah. <laughs> like it just, it just, it keeps me up. And in fact, right. and I know that because it happened last night. And I was just like, ah, oh, you know what? I'll get to that person. I don't know. I'll respond to that one in the morning. I had yeah. the worst sleep last night ever. Like, yeah. it just, you know, it, it, but that's the commitment you have to make, right? And that's that, that constantly always moving forward, you know, with that goal and objective, planting those seeds in heart and, you know, and, and reaping the benefit of doing so. Now, the next question I have for you is um, how did management handle this? 
you know, all of a sudden here's this salesperson on their floor making rap videos mm -hmm. and uh, spending their, his own money to, to uh, boost those posts and to get more people to watch it. You know, mm -hmm. how did management react to that? Man, you know, I think, I think I've been fortunate um, to be around a management staff, you know, a, a management staff in which I'm a part of now that actually, you know, didn't, uh, you know, try to handicap me or, you know, I, I will say the first one I did, it was a song because um, I actually spent my, like I've spent tons of money on my career trying multiple things. Like I had this app. It was an app. I actually, I got a URL, you know, bowtieterrence.com you know, my URL, but I, and I've assigned that URL to multiple things. At once it was an app where people and the app would lead people to our, to my dealerships inventory, um, you know, to buy cars, but I promoted the bowtieterrence.com. And the yeah. first song I made was both the lyrics went bowtieterrence.com. That's my app. <laughs> Catch me at the dealership. Ooh, that's my trap. <laughs> and uh, so the song was legit. Uh, the managers liked the song, but the, the general sales manager at the time, the only, his only problem was it because I didn't mention the dealership's name in, in the song, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but I did that intentionally. Um, and I think that's an issue that management has to address, mm -hmm. um, with salespeople. But the reason why I didn't put the, the dealership name in the song is because I wanted that, I wanted to be able to play that song with me regardless of what dealership that I went to. Mm -hmm. uh, but me just being the first dealership that I was at, I, I witnessed the turnover and people coming and going from different dealerships. You know, that's how, that's how the business is. That, that's how the yep. industry is. Yep, it so is. I don't want this song. Like this is my song. It's about my app. Like I'm not, I can't mention the dealership name because in six months I might be at another one, you know? So now I got to come up with a new song, but that was my first song. Um, so the next song I did, it was, Team Dallas Dodge. That's what the name of the song. You know what I mean? So I got mine out the way. Here we go. Let's go. You know, and nice. mind you, I wasn't in the ad budget for the dealership either. So this is all pro bono. So but, okay, that's, that's that's really cool too. You know, it's that mm -hmm. you know um, you were willing to put your own money on the line here. You know, you're putting your own time into this. You know, the right. the dealership. At what point in time did the dealership start to support some of your efforts? Oh. Um, like, so that song was key. I mean, they all, they've always supported it. It's been all, you know, I'll get the management video uh, staff would get in the videos. Uh, you know, like they, they check out my YouTube is Bowtie Terrence is, is my YouTube. You'll see some of the videos where the management staff, we actually coordinated where we got the whole staff in one of the shots. <laughs> um, so I mean, it's, it's been a, a great, great level of support from everybody. Um, it's just on that, that first video, they weren't too happy with the fact that I didn't mention the dealership name. <laughs> so. But but regardless of which dealership you worked at, mm -hmm. all right, your branding efforts benefited the dealership. Absolutely. Like, like I mean, I, I think what it is is that what we're trying to say here is management, don't be afraid of your sales team going after and creating their own brand. You know, um, I would actually be more concerned about why they're leaving versus if they're going to leave. You know, right. because if you if you're supportive of their efforts, supportive, you know, not, not you know, not just emotionally supportive, but physically supportive, but also financially supportive of them. Right. You know, why would they want to take that brand somewhere else? But you know, as your brand got stronger, all right, that dealership sold more cars. Right. Plain and simple. I mean, it's it's fact. And and well, and me, like I said, I'm like I'm the ultimate team player. You know what I mean? Um, so I. When I was an internet director a year ago, I I was I actually wrote lyrics for you know one of the, my guys got guys that I managed, um, and we did a song together. Mm -hmm. um, we actually, uh, I mean, I've I've done like actually he'd done two songs with me. Um, he's the only one you know with the courage enough to actually do it. <laughs> get outside, you know, it's it's real difficult to get outside that comfort zone. Um, but he he was able to do it, and. Um, so like, I, I think if you just encourage your people to, uh, to do it, they will. Um, but, what, but I don't think that's the main issue. I think the main issue that I get from sales managers, you know, that, is that they ask me, why can I get my salespeople to do that? That's yes. what they say. I get why can't I get my salespeople yeah. to do that? Yeah. Why can't I? And you know, I don't like, I keep it, you know, real, real vague. I'm going to be candid and 100% with you, but 
the majority of the people who asked me that are people who didn't do it themselves or mm -hmm. people who don't do it now. So if you want to get your salespeople to do it, go do it. Lead by example, right? Right. No, I, I completely agree with you. I, I, I think there are a lot of dealerships out there that are seeing the value in uh, salespeople creating their own brand and generating those new audiences that may have never existed for the dealership in the first place. But it is very difficult to expect someone to do something if the management team is not willing to do it themselves. Yeah, absolutely. They, I mean, I'm telling people call, I get calls. Hey, can you talk to my guy? You know, I want to just tell him what you did. I like, like sir, I'm a manager now. <laughs> Like I'm, I'll got my own team. You know, <laughs> you know, team, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, well, like, you, you know, you're, you're not slowing down at all. You're continuing to make content. I'm um, looking yeah. forward to hearing the next song. Um, I loved the one, the real estate one was awesome. That, that yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. And you know what? You've been at this now for several years. There's actually, uh, been people who've been copying some of your efforts. Uh, a few, a few other uh, players out there that all of a sudden come out of the woodworks and rapping at their dealerships as well. So I think that's yeah. awesome. Now you've been at this for a while. Um, what would, if someone was to ask you, what were the three most important things you've learned in the years that you've been doing this? How would you answer that? What would be those three important things? Ooh, the three most important things that I've learned for is the Brand, self-branding? Yeah, everything. It, it doesn't matter anything. It could be in the execution, the creative, the capturing, whatever it is. Well, I'm going to tell you, I think, uh, so my, my uh, girlfriend, I call her my coach. She, <laughs> That's um, nice. We all need one, right? Well, yeah, it was. So I, I get like, these like wild, like I'm working 24-7. You know what I mean? I'm talking about like when I get home, it's like my work doesn't start until I get home. I'm like, man, what can I do next? You know, like. <laughs> What can I do next? Cause you know, if you, out of sight, out of mind. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I say, so I, I start to do, I start to veer, you know, go try and do something different. And, and I think the one of the most important thing is what she tell me, is she just make real, real subtle remark. And she tell me that I'm swerving. Um, so Keeps I think that, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent stay in your lane, like do what works for you. You know what I mean? So you find something that's working, keep doing it, like get better at it, that's uh, make very, very whatever your strength is even stronger, you know? Um, so that's one of them, the most important things. Stay in your lane, do what works for you. Um, don't try to copy this because there's some people, everybody has their strengths, um, but some people will see something working for somebody else. And then they'll try to do that and neglect what, is, what, work, what would work for them. Yep. So, so execute your strength. And uh, like you said, engagement, um, engage your audience, like trying to build your audience. Don't try and build yourself. Oh, I, I, that, that is some great, you know, uh, wisdom and knowledge bombs there. And for guys that are listening or watching this, Hey, you know, uh, j just to re kind of real recap real quick, Bowtie, what you said there is, you know, really stay that course. You know, um, look, you start getting into the content game and I've had this happen to me as well, right? I've been asked multiple times now, you know, Jason, why don't you broaden your audience? Why don't you just, you know, you don't need to just focus on automotive. You can get into all these other verticals and so on and so forth. But you know what? And, and, and you know, the fun thing is I, I, every once in a while I've tried to. And I just kind of get a little bit out of my lane and something will happen, kind of slap me back into it. Yep. So it's like, you know, yep. your, your girlfriend, your coach is a hundred percent right there. You know, it's just like, you know, stay in your lane, be, you know, yep. be, don't be the jack of all trades and masters of nothing, you know, be that master of whatever that is, you know? And, and then, then obviously the next thing is you, you got, you got to engage, like you have to engage. You, you can't just put it out there and then, and then just, um, just leave it out there for, for people to, you know, it just, it doesn't work that way. We need to engage yeah. with the audience. Now, now a part of, a part of engagement means you have to support other people. Like, yes. like there, there are people who are pursuing their own, you know, passion or business who, who, you know, support you. Like there are times where you have, you're going to have to, you know, you share some of their posts, you know, like, don't just be like, oh man, I got people, people supporting me and, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you thank them by sharing their, their content as well. Yeah, you know, that's actually a really good point. I had the same conver a similar conversation with someone the other day. I said, it's, it's not the size of your audience. It's what you do with your audience that makes a difference, right? right. And, you know, that, that audience that you have, if it's 100 or 1,000 or 100,000, you know, it, it's that community that you build within that audience is super important. And that only comes from engagement. Yes, sir.
Hey, um, thank you so much, uh, Terrence, for coming on and jamming it today. This has been so much fun. For everybody out there who's uh, watching or listening to the show and they'd like to learn a little bit more about what you're up to, uh, maybe uh, catch up on the most recent uh, music video, what is the best way to connect with you? Uh, well, any, I'm, well, I'm, I'm bow tied. So the best way to connect with me is whatever social media outlet you use because I'm on all of them. If you want, if you're on Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Bowtie Terrence. Um, awesome. That's it. Thanks. Hey, hey, thanks Terrence. I appreciate you taking the time to share with me today, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, Jason, have yourself a good day. Yes, sir. You too. We covered a bunch of great topics today. What stood out most to you? Be sure to let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like the post and share it to keep the conversation going. You can follow Jason on all social media platforms by following Strategy with Jason. You can find him pretty well everywhere you can share content. I hope we were able to get you thinking. And until the next time, this has been Nathan with Digital Dealership Solutions. Have a great day.